going into the, the, the topic of analyzing art and conservation, many of you might be familiar with transmission images of paintings has been done already by photographic plates. For a very long time, you have a painting, an X-ray source, you have a detector, whatever type it is, and then you get a transmission image, and there's a lot of very valuable information you get already from here. The problem is your X-rays need to go through the entire thing, and the information you get is mainly a density contrast. So that's the kind of information you get when you do transmission image. What we are doing here is we have an X-ray source that just moves over the painting back and forth. So it's focused to a little tiny part. We have a detector which is looking what is not on the other side, but it's just looking what is coming from the sample. And then in the computer, it generates a fluorescence image. The difference between transmission and, and fluorescence image is that we really get elemental information, not just density information, but really elemental. Then we can look at each element independently and create an image like that. Let's say this is the lead L line on a painting. So the idea of, of what is the advantages of scanning and giving micro XRF as a very useful tool for, for research is the possibility of transform or transport complicated information by visual tools. So you have people from different fields, you have chemists, you have art conservators. If you show some of these people a spectrum, they say, oh yeah, there's more lead here. You see, the peak is high. <laughs> oh yeah. The next spectrum, he forgot that one because it's not the language. It's not a common language. But if you show something, you say, yeah, you see here, it's more white. You see, lead is white. There's more lead here. And it's clear. Point, understood. And then you can keep on discussing other topics. What is conservation? What is historical? But you don't need to be going back. So you have the full pictures and you can really talk between different fields of Science. So in principle, yeah, we have here from Altamira to, yeah, I'll try to talk to aliens. Let's see how good that works. <laughs> okay. Maybe they use a different way. Okay. So the idea of the whole thing is basically we have a data block. And so we are scanning and each pixel contains a full spectrum. So we, once we have come, measured this data block, we can decide whatever elements we want to look at whatever intensity we want to display. So that's actually what we want to get from our object. We want to digitalize the energy of, and the position of each, uh, let's say, photons and, and elements in there. And basically, the software allows, with a lot of tools, just to mine that data block. And that's what we were showing the last two, two days here. How do you start it? Because measuring is relatively easy, but then you have this huge amount of information, and then you need to reduce that one to get and to look for the real question and then to, that, to get the answers you are trying to get. Okay, so that's the kind of information you get. And oh, sorry, you don't see it. <laughs> you see it better now. No, it doesn't work. So actually, the idea is that's what it's in the back of all of that. It's just a bunch of numbers. But if you just put the numbers to intensities to really, yeah, then you get something like that. This is a painting for, that was used for the BBC video of Fake and Fortune that we measured in Berlin. And in principle, yeah, you see the mercury here. And um, yeah, the idea was, uh, can we identify the pigments that we use? Are they OK uh, with, with the expected uh, type of, yeah, what type of material is used? Or retouch, all of that you can see. But just get away from, from these numbers. And now just try to get the image and then use the image to help you the interpretation. So you can just look at the mercury line, the barium line. And then you can just shoot and see exactly where each element or pigment was used for the elemental distribution. And I like these three images because they look very cool, but actually what you see here is the three main important things that micro XRF gives you as a technique. This is a chip. Uh, you see the, the gold wires inside. So this is not on the surface. So this is below several centimeters, micrometers to millimeters of plastic. So you're getting not only information what is on the surface of your painting, for example, but also what's behind. So it's not only a superficial technique, but it also allows you to get information what is below the surface. Second one is you're not only detecting main elements, but you're taking even very small concentrations of elements. Sometimes a painting, yeah, it's a cobalt, but you might be interested to see if it contains nickel or not, and that's the information you're looking for. Not for the cobalt, you see that very easily, that it's cobalt blue, but the nickel which is just mainly a trace, is, is important for you. So this is another thing. And the next one is you don't need any sample preparation, which is a very good thing in the museum. You just 
problem coding or polishing is not always <laughs> the one you want to do with your painting. So that's the idea of why it's really very good to use for this kind of work. So you have the three pictures. In principle, what do we do? We have seen already several images. What we do is we just go continuously at quite the data. We do not stop. And then we do line by line over the entire painting. The length of the line, this is a step size. And the same length that has a step size is the direction for the next one. And then we just go continuously over the painting. And then we just color code that either by monochrome or, yes, polychrome, whatever. So just what is the best way for you to show the information? So that's how we create these kind of images. And then we can select from the data cube any energy or element, and this will be displayed. So you're starting for your painting, you make sure that then you get the information. And since you're not getting one, but you're getting full spectra, you can look at several lines of the same element, for example, lead. This is the high energy line of lead, which is around 10 kilo electron volt, which looks a little bit deeper into your sample. And this is the superficial, the low energy line of lead. So we're seeing here is the surface of the painting. You could say that's some kind of a makeup, and that's a real person. So it looks a little bit older in that one. Uh, but in principle, what you're seeing is really the last touch of the painting. That's the M line. The M line would be 1 to 10 micrometers of the sample, where the L might be going 100, 200, 300 microns to the last layers of your painting. So you can see your object at different layers. You see here the software, and then you can choose whatever element you want to have, and then let them visualize the different mapping. 